Bollinger Bands indicator is a very versatile indicator that can be used to build mean reversion and trend following breakout strategies. Now I already did a video where I used Bollinger Bands to build mean reversion strategies, trading most liquid ETFs in a portfolio. And you can watch that video through the link in the corner. Today we will use Bollinger Bands to build trend following breakout strategies on futures. Bollinger in his book on Bollinger Bands, he mentioned two indicators that are derived from Bollinger Bands that you can use to compare instruments to each other very easily. Those two indicators are percent B and bandwidth. In this video, we will focus on percent B to build trend following breakout strategies on future. Now, percent B is a very good indicator because we can use it to compare instruments to each other because percent B measures the current price position relative to the Bollinger Bands. So this is the formula to calculate percent B is the current price minus the lower Bollinger Band divided by the upper Bollinger Band minus the lower Bollinger Band. So from this formula, if percent B equals zero, that means the current price is at the lower Bollinger Band. And if percent B equals one, that means the current price is at the upper Bollinger Bands. And if it's greater than one, that means uh, the price is above Bollinger Bands. And if it's less than zero, that means we are below the lower band. So here is an illustration of what does that look like. So I drew here, this is Bollinger Bands using 20 period moving average and one standard deviation. And then this is percent B and again it's 20 period and one standard deviation. So these dotted lines are one and zero. And we can look at this, it's a lot easier to judge. So let's look at th this part for example. They are all hugging the one. That means the close on these bars are around the upper Bollinger Bands. And we can see here, this is the close around the upper Bollinger Bands, this close, this close. All these closes are around the upper Bollinger Bands. Also, we can measure something a lot easier. So for example, look at this. This says two. Two means that the current close is above Bollinger Bands by the width of the Bollinger Band. So this is very neat. Also, we can see this one. This is minus one. That means the current close is below the lower Bollinger Bands by an amount equal to the width of the Bollinger Bands. And this is what I mean. So look at this bar and look at this bar. So obviously this bar is a is bigger than this bar, but yet it's the same level. So it's minus one. That means this bar, even though it's bigger than this one, it's still below the lower Bollinger Bands by an amount equal to the width of the Bollinger Band. So by using percent B, we can compare any instrument to another instrument. And if both of them zero, that means both of them near the close. If both of them minus one, that means both of them below their uh, relative Bollinger Bands by an amount equal to the width, even though both instruments might have different Bollinger Band width. So now that we understand what, how percent B works, let's go to trade station. And I plotted the same thing here again. So this is the NASDAQ futures and this is the Bollinger Bands using the close five periods, one standard deviation up and down. And this is percent B five period, one standard deviation up and down. And you can see, for example, here, that means we are at the low and we can see the close at the lower band. And here again, it's a little bit below zero. So that means the close here is below zero a little bit. And so now we can see that yes, percent B act exactly as Bollinger Bands and in fact give us better information. So let's get rid of Bollinger Bands. Okay, so now we can start to build our strategy. So since this is a trend following breakout strategy, we are looking for a breakout. And so we will look to buy whenever percent B crosses above one 
So here is the strategy. We are entering whenever we crossing above one, when percent B crosses above one, and we're exiting when the close is below the moving average. So I used an 80 bar moving average. And here is the 80 bar moving average, and we can see that whenever we dip below, we exit, and when we cross above uh, one again, we go along, we dip below, we exit, and so on and so forth. So the performance of this strategy, I'm using data since uh, 2009, and the performance is we have 4,800 trades with 32 average trade. So since we are exiting below the moving average, it makes sense then we can use that as a filter to go along also. So let's add that condition. And look at that. The filter does perform very, very well. We increased our average trade by almost four times and we reduced our uh, trades by almost 60%. But still, we have more than 1,300 trades, so that's very good. So I will optimize the moving average and let's go from 40 to 300 by 20. And here is the optimization result. So if we sort the test and let's look at, so this is the net profit and we can see all of them are profitable with 80 sitting between two peaks here and even the lowest one, which is 180, we are still making about uh, $90,000. Let's see what's the average trade on the 180. So this is 180 and the average trade is $100, which is really good for NASDAQ. So, I mean, all of them are excellent. Now, I want to use the same system, let's say for ES. So, it still performs well on ES, not as well as NASDAQ. This is 82 on ES, so it's a little bit on the low side. And roughly same number of trades. And let's check it on... So, this is on the Russell, and this is also a, a bit on the low side but we're still having the same number of trades. So this is now with one improvement and we went from 35 to 47. So that's a good improvement. We reduce the number of trades. And the only improvement I ask is that percent be above one for two bars. So when it's above one for two bars, then, and of course we are above the moving average we buy and then we sell when we are below the moving average. Now you can combine the percent B indicator with the bandwidth to get ready for a squeeze. So when a squeeze happens, the bandwidth will shrink and then you are waiting for a breakout, basically when percent B above one and then you go long or below zero, you go short. Building a strategy using the bandwidth and percent B on multiple instruments will yield to a really robust portfolio, but that's for another video. I hope you got some value out of this video. If you did, please do subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of the great content that I post on the channel. And if you have any questions, please do so below the video and I'll be more than happy to answer them. Of course, if you wanna take this further, you are most welcome to join the Discord community through the link below, where I host live weekly questions and answer sessions with more than 450 answers on video already all catalog so you can easily find the answer you are looking for with strategy codes like these are available for download for free also right now we have three portfolios that you can trade their signals they are monthly signals trading momentum on stocks and on etfs thank you for watching until the next video stay safe and i'll see you soon